Welcome to the Harper Tech Academy and to uh, Harper Recipe Creations. Today we're making a beautiful olive studded focaccia bread. Now a lot of you are probably saying focaccia, I've heard of that in the past. If you're older than 30 you'd know that um, that was the bread that all sandwiches were made in in the 80s and 90s and even into the 2000s. But it's not around very much so it makes it really um, it's actually really easy to make. So let's have a look at um, our ingredients and don't let me forget the recipe is actually in the comments below so make sure you download that, give it a print, um, ready to cook. So let's have a look at some of our ingredients. So making bread we have this um, beautiful rosemary and that rosemary has actually come from my garden and if I get a chance I might go and take a photo and actually add that to the video. We've got flour, we've got uh, dried yeast, uh, but you can also use fresh yeast um, and some olives here. Now these are stuffed olives, but you can use a whole range of olives, but just make sure that they're pitted or you pit them before you put them in. But the green olive tends to work better. All right, so let's start. The first part is we're actually going to get our water and our yeast. Now I thought I'd just give you a quick lesson We've got our scales. Now we need to weigh this. It's really important when we're making bread that we actually weigh. Now you'll notice here that it's about 21 degrees. Now when we hit tear, it goes back to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to measure. I have the um, sachet here, dried yeast, three grams, but you've got the recipe there. So we need three grams. And there we go. We'll just put that back in there. Now the next thing is we're actually going to get a jug and um, the recipe is 187 millilitres. All right so we're here in Australia so if you're over in uh, North America or somewhere else um, you might have to convert that. Now the important thing I'm just going to turn the tap on to warm is that with yeast to get it to actually activate you want to have the yeast getting warm all right but not hot if it's over about 50 degrees the yeast dies and that's our raising agent um, little trick is when you're actually running the hot water use the back part of your hand here and if it's too hot you'll feel it if it's too cold but when it feels the same you actually want to bring it to blood temperature now blood temperature is about 32 to 34 degrees Females may be slightly warmer than males. We're actually going to measure out 187. And to start the party, and you think, what is he talking about party? Sugar is, um, when we're feeding um, yeast, sugar is what they really love. All right. And then I'm going to put my yeast, just bring that back in. I'm going to put the yeast in and give it a stir. Now what you need to do is actually leave this in a warm place for a while. Now if you have a look over here what I'd suggest if you're at home is just to have a pot on the stove, put the uh, yeast near it and what we're going to end up with this has been a, a, about half an hour to 40 minutes and I'm just going to bring it down here you'll see how it's become frothy. All right, so basically what's happened here is the yeast has activated, which is super important before you actually start to make your bread. All right, so next step, we're actually going to get a bigger bowl. And I've measured out my flour, again with 280 grams. I'm actually going to pour that into the bowl. I normally start these things in the bowl. It just works a little bit better. So we're going to put some sea salt, all right? Fair, fair grind of sea salt into that. Make it really nice. And a touch of olive oil. So about 15 mils, all right? Been Mediterranean. Just put some 
bit of olive oil in there. It adds sort of a nice little luster in, to our bread. Now, once we're actually going to make a well in the metal, all right, so literally just a hole in the metal, and then we're going to pour our yeast into it. Now, what you're going to see here as we mix it is it will start to come together. Now, depending on when your flour was milled, where it's come from, sometimes it might be a bit sticky, sometimes it might be a bit dry. And this is where we need to actually use our discretion in, in recipes that if it's too dry, and you'll know it's too dry because it, it's just, it, it's not coming together. If it's too wet, when you put it on your hands, it's just sticky and not very nice at all. Now, bringing this together, and when I get to this stage, all right, I'll show you on the main cam there. We're actually going to take it out of the bowl and I've got a little bit of extra flour here. So a sprinkle on the bench, all right? Don't put loads of flour down. It's just enough to actually bring it together. And this is where I find bread making particularly cathartic. And because, you know, it, you know, if you've, there's something in your life you're thinking about and you just need a bit of exercise or you want to work it a bit, kneading bread is a really lovely way of doing it. So what I'm doing here, I'm just bringing this together and at the same time, rubbing in all the bits that are still there. Now, if it's too wet, it's going to stick to your hands. It's actually pretty good today, if you have a look. Some days it's sticking to your hands. That's telling you put more flour. So you'll notice that I have the flour there ready to go. I'm going to keep mixing that around. And we're going to get to a point where it all comes together. And then we're going to knead it. Okay, so we're at about that point. Now, if you actually have a look at the bread at the moment, it hasn't been developed. It's a bit wrinkly. We want it super smooth before we actually prove it. And I'll talk about proving when we get to that point. So we need to knead it. All right. So I'm just going to put a little bit more flour here and show you the basic kneading. Now, you can't see my feet, but my feet are straight like that. And I'm away from the bench. Now I'm right handed so I'm actually going to use this part of my hand and I'm going to lean into it and what we're doing is we're actually developing the gluten which is the protein strands in the actual flour so that we get a nice stretchy dough like you do in pizza. So the technique, hold here straight arm, you're going to lean into it. Now it's going to stretch and then the left hand is going to roll it. So I'm going to start to knead this. So when it, it's starting to get slightly sticky, I'm going to put a little bit more flour. Now, you'd, I bet you'd love to see it go fast forward. We'll see. All right. So I'm actually starting to knead this. And at the same time, bringing all the bits, if you've got bits, try and keep it off the floor if you can. And it's nice and soft. Sometimes you might find it's a bit hard, but it's just good exercise. If you're into your gym, getting your cardio up, making bread is just an amazing way of doing it. So at this point, you see it's starting to develop, but it's still not completely smooth. So I'm gonna keep going. It's just beautiful. All right, so have a look here. You'll see it's smoothing up. It's really starting to get nice and smooth. Just gonna knead it that little bit more. And the thing is you can't really over knead it. It's once it's, it's really super smooth, that's when it's ready. So while I'm kneading, let's talk about knocking back and proving. So we've actually let the yeast, in essence, have a party. And they've started to activate. But 
what we want is in, put the dough in a warm place until it's ready to go. So they're actually going to continue to uh, start eating and having that party and you're going to get a gas starting to happen. So what I normally do, I'll use the same bowl, all right? And I'm just going to put it in there, get a little bit of plastic wrap, and I'm gonna put that in a warm place, let it prove, okay? So that's the first stage. Welcome back, it's been about 40, 45 minutes. So if you have a look over here, I've got the uh, bowl. So let's take a look at our dough. So when I take this off, what you're gonna notice is the dough has definitely doubled, all right? And depending on the day, it's quite a cold day, so it's taken a little bit longer. Um, if it's a winter, it's gonna take even longer, but you'll see when I pull this out, how you can see the aeration happening there. So we're gonna scoop this out of the bottom. It might be a bit sticky, so you might need a little bit of flour to get it out. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to knock it back and knocking it back is actually like knocking or um, using a fist to knock the dough back. Okay, ready to go. So I'm going to leave that in the bowl. Before we um, move on, we've got the fresh rosemary. Now, this comes from our garden. Um, what I'm going to do is take some of it. You don't want this stalk. You just want the actual rosemary. The stalk is just too bad. But a little chef trick, if you actually dry these out and actually put um, meat skewers on there and bake them or put them on the barbecue, um, it just adds a beautiful flavor. And it's a really, you know, get a nice stalky one there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some rosemary actually into the um, dough and some on top. So I just need to chop it down a little bit. I should add half of this in here too. So that we're really getting that flavor happening throughout. But you don't want big bits in the middle, it's, it's just too hard. So just chop that down a little bit, just using your um, chef's knife. All right, so I'm gonna add that to my dough. And I'm going to sort of mix that in. Now, depending on what you have at home or in your kitchen, you actually need like a pie dish or something like that. Now, you could go something that's flatter, like this for a thinner bread, or something a bit thicker. For the um, one part of that recipe, this is about right. So we're just going to put all all of that rosemary in there, all that absolute goodness. I can sort of, I can smell the Mediterranean when I smell that rosemary. So we're just going to mix, mix the rosemary in a little bit. And by doing that, we're actually knocking it back at the same time. All right, just giving it another little knead because this is only the mid stage, if you can believe it. So if you have a look, it's actually embedded in there. Now, to get ready, I need my olive oil. It's the Mediterranean. Olive oil is in everything. So we're actually going to put a little bit of olive oil and we're going to paint it into the base of that, all right, our pie dish, just so it doesn't stick. But also what the olive oil does when it cooks, it actually gives a nice little crust on the bottom and that really adds a lot of flavor. Now I would expect that this dough is going to rise at least half again into this pie dish. All right, so we've got that prepared. Now the next step, we're going to take some of our olives and we're going to chop them, we're gonna put them in the dough and the rest are going to be studded on the top. All right, so with just going to break them in half and put that, now this is gonna add a lot of extra flavor, so as you cut through, you're gonna be getting olives. 
and on the top too. It's just absolutely sensational, makes such a difference. So we'll chop in there. And we're going to mix those olives in as best as you can. Just again, knocking back again, it's really important. This makes such a difference to the overall um, fluffiness of the bread. Okay. All right, so now I've got my pie dish here. And now I'm going to work this dough down into the pie dish. Get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is just press it down and stretch it. All right, until. Then what we're going to do, we're going to stud some of more rosemary on top. And I'm just going to take that off. Try not to get any stalk in here. Just break it up with your hands a little bit. Keep that for later. You want lots of rosemary. The flavour is going to be absolutely sensational. All right, so press that in. Then we're going to get our whole olives. And we're actually going to stick them in or stub them. Just think of putting a pin into something. So we're actually going to stub them at probably about one centimeter across and two centimeters along. And this is actually going to make it look better later on. So you're actually pushing it all the way in. And I can already see that the bread is starting to rise again because we've, we've knocked it back once and then we're going to let it rise again. And that's gonna make such a difference. We'll get those olives in. And on the final there, okay. So you see it's starting to settle a little. Just gonna press it into my mold so that it's as even as it can be as it rises again. Now, we're gonna paint it with a bit of olive oil on top. So when we um, eventually bake this, it's going to be a nice golden brown and beautiful. Now keep that pot of water on because we're going to reprove this. Final thing really important with bread, it's a good bit of um, ground sea salt. And I don't know, most people use rock salt to actually mine out of the ground. Sea salt has a very different flavor to um, the rock salt and it's actually evaporated out of the ocean and into little flakes. It's just beautiful Okay, so that's ready for reproving Get a little bit more of our cling wrap Wrap that And we want to keep the moisture in here and it also helps making that very humid in there Which is going to be perfect then I'm going to put it back near my pot to actually keep it um, proving. All right, it's actually been an hour and a half since the, um, the, the last one. So now it's actually, if you have a look here, I'm gonna take that plastic wrap off. It's actually risen quite a bit. So this is actually ready now to go in the oven. So we basically paste this in the oven at 180 to 200 degrees, depending on your oven for about 25 minutes until it's cooked all the way through. So we'll put it in the oven right now. Don't forget to put a timer on just so you don't forget it. 25 minutes later, the um, bread comes out of the oven and then you just need to put it onto a tray to cool it off. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Can't wait to get into it. Thanks for watching the Harper Tech Academy and I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos from the Harper Tech Academy, make sure you subscribe on the video. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.